This is the first segment of the series, The Laws of God and the 613 Precepts. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And what it says is, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The Bible is the inspired word of God. And it was designed for our redemption and salvation. No more, no less. And that's the reason why your faith is quite crucial. The Lord gave me assignment to teach the laws of God, particularly those that were handed down to Moses and confirmed in the New Testament. Now, I'm hearing a lot of people say, we're under the grace, not, not law. You got a point, but there are conditions. And this is what a lot of people are not getting, are those conditions. Now, before I go any further, the Lord led me to a number of verses that I must talk about right now. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 24, verse 22. Ye shall have one manner of law, as well for the stranger as for one of your own country. I am the Lord your God. Now, this is a precept that's beneath the first commandment. And I will discuss that a little bit later on, how that works. Now go to Proverbs chapter 28, verse 9. As I said, you need to be writing the scripture down. Whether you are able to, don't listen to what I'm saying. Write the scripture down. Read it yourself. Now, this is what Proverbs 28, 9 says. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law even his prayer shall be abomination. Now, the Lord told me what I'm about to teach, there are going to be those that can't hear it or it's not for all ears to hear. And at the same time, he explained to me what that meant. It means that those of you that don't have ears to hear, are being influenced by one or more unclean spirits that are preventing you from hearing. And I'll get into that a little bit later on how the spirits work. The Holy Bible has been translated into 1,200 languages. Pretty much everyone, regardless of their religion has been exposed to the Ten Commandments. Bibles can be purchased at the dollar store. There are Bibles in motels, prisons, and everyone has had the opportunity to learn how to read and write. The reason why I'm saying all of these things is because the definition of blind in the Bible Days does not apply today. Everyone will be held accountable. Ignorance of the law is no excuse, and I'm pretty sure you've heard that pertaining to man-made laws. Well, the same principle applies to God's laws. Ignorance of the laws is no excuse. You have Bibles all over the place. You had better learn how to read and read them. Don't depend on someone else to read the Bible to you. 
make sure you have your own copy of the Bible, one that you're able to write in, take notes, and everything. You need your own personal copy because you're going to be held accountable. You're not going to have an excuse. I've heard some ministers say that they've talked to people that it appears that they think that they're going to have some type of excuse when they go to divine judgment. But what you're not realizing, when you go to divine judgment, you're going to be in spirit form and you're not going to be able to lie. So you better learn these laws. Because saying, I did not know, or so-and-so told me, will not work. Now, the Lord is leading me to talk about the court of divine judgment before I get into any other uh, things. Because evidently there's misconception about how that works. Because yet yeah, you're going to go to court and there are going to be jurors and judges at this court. And you need to know what's going to happen. Now, I'd like for you to turn to Matthew chapter 10 verse 14 to start off with right now. And what it says is, Whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words when you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. The Lord led me to two other books that said the same thing because the Lord was talking to me. If you go to Mark chapter 6 verse 11 as well as Luke chapter 9 verse 5, you will see the same things. Basically all I have to say is that I'm, I don't have time for debates or controversial issues about what I'm about to teach you. I'm going to use scripture. What you do is you go back into your Bible and read it and get the understanding. You may have to pray for understanding, but you get the understanding of the scripture that I'm about to give you. I have a whole bunch of sins that I must cover myself, so I do not have time to hold conversations with you about what I'm teaching you. Go to the scripture and start covering your own sins. And then I'll be doing a teaching on covering sins a little bit later on. And uh, it's a serious issue. Okay? you got to cover your sins. Now, a lot of people doesn't understand that not only you're not supposed to break the Ten Commandments. You're not supposed to think about breaking any of the Ten Commandments. And the Tenth Commandment was one that was intended to prevent you from breaking the other commandments. And many people don't know that because the principles of the Tenth Commandment weren't taught. The Ten Commandments are the upper level of laws. They are the death penalty laws, which means you go to hell. But there are precepts beneath each of those Ten Commandments. And in breaking any of the precepts, you have broken that ten com one of those Ten Commandments. And a lot of people are not getting that. Uh, the Tenth Commandment is the Thought Commandment. And when I cover the individual commandments, I will be explaining that a little further. One of the things that you have to keep in mind is that man-made laws are interrelated and interconnected to God's laws. But at the same time, man-made laws can seduce you into breaking God's laws. And you're going to have to understand that. Now, I'm going to get into the Court of Divine Judgment. 
I know many of you have heard this before, but you need to hear it again in a different perspective and how it's all put together. I'm going to give you scripture to document what I am about to talk about. And you need to read this scripture. We have a divine registry, a book that everyone's name is recorded in at birth and where they are from originally. Then we have the Book of Life. Most people have learned about the Book of Life, but I don't think that they really understand what that means. We have the Book of Death, and I don't think a lot of people understand what that means. And then we have a number of books of original entry that God uses pertaining to the precepts that you have broken or the good works that you have done. Now, your name is recorded in the registry. The only way your name is going to be in the book of life is if you have led a righteous life. The only thing that's going to be there is your name. If you haven't led a righteous life, your name is not going to be in the book of life. It's going to be in the book of death. Now, in studying about the various books that are going to be brought out in the divine judgment, you'll run into a number of different books or names that people have uh, associated with the books that are going to be shown at the divine judgment. And you'll read inscription in, in scripture about these books. The book of remembrance. The book of perdition. Those books, first of all, in the book of life, no negative anything is going to be written in it. No bad nothing. Your name is the only thing that's going to be there. That's if you're deserving to go to heaven, if you've been saved. If your name is not in the book of life, then you're, you're going to be sent to hellfire. That means that your name is in the book of death. Now, how do you get into the book of life? You have to abide by the laws. And each law that you break, every precept, there's an accounting of it. And all of your good works, there's an accounting of it. The easiest way for me to explain this is that if you have more good works than bad works, then you'll be in the book of life. If it's the reverse, you're going to be in the book of death. Now, how do you get in the book of life? Abiding by the laws, commandments, precepts and ordinances of God. 